Hello YouTube, today we are taking a look at this Dell Dimension E5110, a decent machine from 2005, which has now turned into a bit of a dust collector, as you'll see in a bit. Taking a quick look at the back, some of the ports have been blocked on the motherboard since there are pre-installed cards, but the motherboard ones should function just fine. And yes, it has a modem card for blazing fast internet. This machine seems to have potentially been upgraded or has had some cards swapped out since the manual shows a different layout, but that could just be something different with the manual. I'm unsure if Dell had factory upgrades at the time, but this seems likely. Let's get into this machine and see what awaits. A simple pull from a lever on top releases the side cover and everything has a fine layer of dust. Here's the power supply information. Pause the video if you care to read it. From what I found out, this 150 watt PSU seems to date around July of 2005, but feel free to correct me if that date is wrong. From the bottom of the case to the CPU fan shroud, everything has dust on it. Thankfully though, it seems that apart from the dust, there is no major damage to the internals. The way that Dell makes their cases is super convenient for disassembly. Minimal screws and lots of simple latches or clips. The hard drive is a 160GB drive from MacStore. This is the original drive this PC came with from the factory. There are date stamps on the drive holders. Giving the drive a good wipe with a brush helps to remove the surface dust. The side cover was pretty clean, apart from some dust on the bottom of the cover where all the dust accumulated. The second drive caddy was also pretty clean. Now it's time to remove the cards. A simple latch holds them in without the need for screws. The first to come out is the video card, an OEM part from Radeon. This card is not a power hungry beast. Rather, this fanless card is the Radeon X300 SE sporting a whopping 128 megabytes of VRAM. It also has DVI, VGA, and even S video outputs for all your multimedia needs. The next card is one that is rather pointless nowadays, but I will put back in. It seems to be an Intel modem adapter to use for blazing fast internet via your phone line. It does look pretty cool though, and to think that this is tiny compared to much older cards and hardware that use the same phone lines. The last card here is a pretty fancy one, but pretty common among these multimedia machines. It's a standard Sound Blaster card that I think may have been also an OEM part, but again, correct me if I'm wrong. It has a pretty beefy connector on it to play all your ripped CDs and high res audio. It's time to move on to the drive case, but this machine only has one drive installed. Pulling that blue latch unclips the front bezel, which is mainly to cover up the empty bays and to look nice. Pulling the latch again allows us to remove the drive, and I've already disconnected it. This is a Philips DVD RW drive that uses IDE. That surprised me a little bit considering the hard drive was using SATA, but there's nothing wrong with good old IDE. Before moving on with the rest of the PC, I decided to clean the case more since all the expansion cards and the DVD drive were out of the machine. It isn't that clear on camera, but this thing was extremely dusty. Even the front of the case where the air is taken in was just layered with dust. This took a long while to remove the majority of it, 
but it's worth it since who knows what damage it would have caused to these components. Now it was time to take a look at what I believe to be the dustiest area of all, the CPU heatsink in the fan shroud assembly, and with a Pentium 4 in here, it's bound to have a lot of hot air moving. This is a heavy heatsink, the fact that they even managed to make it stay on the motherboard with only two screws surprised me. But as you can see, this thing was just layered with dust. It's not as bad as on other machines, but still, this is just crazy for a home machine. The fan assembly essentially just changed into another color from all the dust stuck to it, but that's expected on these older machines with hot running CPUs. Overall though, this was starting to clean up nicely. It was now time to remove the RAM, consisting of four 256MB DIMMs and the processor. The processor is a Pentium 4 630 with hyper-threading clocked at 3 GHz. With everything removed apart from the PSU and the motherboard, I gave it a final clean and it was now time to put everything back in it. First, I started with the four RAM DIMMs, then the processor and the heatsink assembly. After that, the cards were put back in, the sound blaster, then the modem, and finally the graphics card. The hard drive was put back in its caddy and plugged back in. Then the DVD drive was reinserted along with the front cover. Being sure to reconnect the drive, the machine looked nearly new at this point. Finally, the cover was put back on, and there it is, the once dusty beast cleaned up nicely. This isn't the last time you'll see this PC. I plan on doing some minor upgrades and eventually benchmarking it. Maybe even trying to use it as a daily driver. If you have any suggestions, be sure to leave a comment. Stay tuned for part 2 of this mini series. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.